I've spent the last month and a half putting these Astro A50s to the test, finding out whether or not these $300 investments are worth the price. So, are they? Let's find out. Black Oni. Let's talk a bit about the presentation. If you go to a restaurant, most would expect not only for the food to taste great, but to look great as well. For that reason, part of my excitement when Astro sent over a pair for me to review was actually looking at the packaging in person. Similar to the 2011 Astro A40s, these are marvel to look at. The A50s are presented as a premium gaming product. The external box has a blend of exciting and sleek colors and shapes, invoking a sense of sophistication and edginess before you even open the box. Once opened, you're presented with a very simple layout with the Astro's front and center and the stand and cables underneath it. Putting the stand together is simple, it looks sleek, and it matches the look and feel of the actual headsets. Aesthetics and build quality of the headsets are no different in that it's extremely well built, yet lightweight and comfortable. Compared to the Astro A40s, there isn't much difference at first, aside from these being white and these being black. Upon further inspection, however, you will notice three key things. Firstly, the A50s only come in one color, black. Secondly, the A50s no longer give you the ability to customize your speaker tags. It's not a big deal at all, but it does take away some of that customization you may have been used to in older models. So if that is important to you, you may want to look at the aforementioned A40s. Lastly, the speaker tags have been replaced with functional onset controls. These help with unifying the experience to only the headset. On the right side, you have controls for voice to game audio balancing, power button, volume rock around the bottom, and an audio switch for media gaming and pro mode. On the left side of the headsets, you'll find the boom microphone, which was strange for me because my previous headsets all had the microphone on the right. While adjusting to this new change, I noticed something peculiar and innovative. Moving the microphone to its upright position away from your mouth automatically sets the microphone to mute. I can't say I've seen other gaming headsets use this functionality similar to these, and it's much welcome here. Audio quality is what you would expect from a premium audio device. Sounds are rich, clear, and bass is heavy where it counts. I'll admit, I'm no audiophile, but I do recognize great sound when I hear it. This headset has improved noise isolation due to the design of the cups and audio on both ends, input and output through the microphone is very clear. The microphone quality is even better than the previous A40s, which was already pretty good before. People on the opposite side of conversations always say they can hear me well, and testing it out myself through live streaming gave similar results. The fact that these headsets are completely wireless, utilizing the 5.8 GHz frequency band is icing on the cake, but can be a flag for concern for those with several wireless devices that can access that frequency. I tested these headphones on the PlayStation 4 and made sure to have the setup done properly and to the book. Setup is pretty simple. I did have a few issues when it comes to connectivity, so let's take a moment to talk about those issues. If you listen really closely, you can hear the high frequency at play when interacting with certain elements that create subtle sounds. This is likely just an artifact of the wireless technology sending out frequencies, and most people may not even be able to hear it. I noticed it, and it bothered me at first, having not experienced that with my previous headsets. And speaking of frequencies, I noticed some wireless transmission conflicts when using these headphones in my apartment. Since the PlayStation itself is wireless, which wirelessly talks to my controller, which also has my phone near it so that I can pick up text messages with a computer nearby so that I can record gameplay footage and the actual wireless transmitter on the A50s near there as well as the transmitter for the A40s that I had before kind of made things a little complicated. This was coupled with the fact that my wireless router in Airport Extreme was near both the PlayStation and the transmitters. I also noticed that somehow, magically, my A50s managed to unpair themselves from my PlayStation 4 with the PlayStation 4 on standby mode charging both this and connected to the transmitter. Perhaps if I changed the band on my Airport Extreme router, I wouldn't have these issues. But reducing the number of wireless devices within close proximity typically yielded better results. Just be mindful of the other wireless devices in your setup and try to have your mix stand receiver further away from your console and router. The less interference, the better. Overall, it has been a nuisance dealing with those issues, but not deal-breaking. Just something to consider in terms of keeping your expectations realistic to the situation. Let's talk about the price. 
$300 is a lot of money, I'm not gonna lie. But if you're already in the market for a headset, you kind of know what you're dealing with in terms of pricing. I would say in terms of wireless headsets, this is pretty much on the mark when it comes to pricing. With options like the PlayStation Plus Gold headset available on Amazon for $88, it's hard to sell some on the value proposition. In the context of my experience with the A40s and other older Turtle Beach headsets, I can say with confidence that the convenience and ease of setup for these headphones are worth the price alone. The fact that they hold a charge long enough to game continuously all day is an added bonus, but do expect to recharge the battery in between every few sessions. The fact that these come with everything you need out of the box to use them with your console and that they come with a 30 day money back guarantee is a no brainer for anyone looking for a supreme audio experience. So the bottom line is buy. Let's talk about the reasons why. The good, it has great design and comfort, comes with everything you need and has great audio and microphone quality. Let's talk about the bad. It's expensive. You can have some problems with interference if you have too many devices in the same area that use the same frequency or can cause interference. Non-customizable. And there you have it, guys. If you're in the market for a new headset and you've already been looking at these, you should probably pick them up. You wouldn't be regretting it at all. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next review. Game on. And Jay Blaze out. Headphoneception here. I, don't, I can't... This, this probably looks absurd. I'm sorry. Sorry you had to see that.